Hello everybody, welcome back to the Denmall series, and welcome to the final episode of the St. Louis Expedition. Today we're going to be taking a look at La Plaza Frontenac, and I feel like I have to say Le because this mall is very, very fancy, very upscale, and different, much, much different than anything I've ever seen. So, the Plaza Frontenac was built in 1974, resembling a colonial mansion. It was built where it is because of its affluent surroundings, being near Crystal Lake Park in Frontenac. It opened with anchors Zach's Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus, and several high-end specialty shops. It was decked with fancy decor, grand staircases, wood floors, and beautiful fountains. So heading into this mall, you just get an immediate taste of what the rest of it's like, with few high-end shoppers, piano music playing over the speakers, stores you've never even heard of, the golden and pristine feeling of everything, and just being there, it's unlike any mall you'll ever see. The wood flooring, the music. I've never heard of any of this. Oh, I've heard coach. Really? Wow. In 1984, the mall started facing serious competition from the nearby St. Louis Galleria. <laughs> So in 1994, the Plaza Frontenac remodeled extensively, adding new stores and redoing the interior to retain the modern, luxurious feel, but also feeling warmer and cozier. With the mall boasting imported European furniture, handmade carpets, a reserved grand piano which you'll see later, and high-end restrooms with lounges and being lined with wood entirely, the Urban Land Institute even called the mall cutting edge and ahead of its time. By 2010, some of the mall's high-end stores were slowly being replaced by more local and national chains. And in 2011, Davis Street Properties, the longtime owners of the mall, sold it to the more well-known mall company, General Growth Properties. And since then, the mall has really been fine. Not doing extraordinarily well, and not doing bad, but just stagnant, kind of hidden in the neighborhoods of St. Louis, overshadowed by the Goliath amount of malls surrounding it. While strange and not what I'm used to, I must say it's a treat walking through here. The grand music and colorful feeling, all the nice couches and plants, makes it a very cozy mall. And while you can see the mall still suffers from a lack of tenancy in places, it still feels like it's doing well enough, and I'm sure it will continue to do well for at least the next couple years. I'm not sure this mall can ever really die. It features the only stores of its kind in the city, and it's in such a rich neighborhood, it can't really be thrown around by crime. Maybe a lack of shoppers? I guess in the coming years we'll find out, but just being here now is absolutely beautiful. So going up here to the second level is really where you see a lot of this mall's deadness and how empty it is because there's no shoppers up here and just hearing the blaring music it makes it a lot more serene and surreal just being up here looking down the cavernous hallways looking at the emptiness
So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And I hope you guys enjoyed the entirety of the St. Louis Expedition as much as I did. It was so fun, and nothing would have been possible without the Gosh family. So thank you guys so much. In next week's episode, we'll be taking a look at the Southridge Mall in Des Moines, Iowa. Yes, I told you guys I'd revisit it in the fall, and this time I was able to see much, much more. So be looking forward to that. But until next time, have yourselves a lovely day, and peace out guys. See you later.